Matthew tells us, Then Jesus came with the disciples unto a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane means oil press. And down below here they have found an ancient oil press. So this is quite likely the place on the Mount of Olives where Luke tells us Jesus often came with his disciples. Uh, it was a place that was known to the disciples. Jesus came here often with them, probably to pray and just to get away from the city and the noises and to get away a quiet place. And that's how Judas knew where to bring them because it was a place that Jesus often went to with his disciples. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And then he said unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Wait here and pray with me. And he went a little farther and he fell on his face and he prayed saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them asleep. And he said to Peter, Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away again and the second time he prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. The prayer, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. What cup? If what is possible? What Jesus is actually praying is, Father, if it's possible for men to be saved by any other means, then let this cup or let this death pass. I, I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to do it. If it's possible that man can be saved by being good, being moral, being religious, if it's possible that man can be saved by keeping the law, then let this cup pass from me. Now the fact that Jesus went to the cross declares to us very plainly, very definitely, that salvation from sin is not possible except by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our sins. The Bible says that all of us like sheep have gone astray. We turned every one of us to our own ways and God laid on him the iniquities of us all. Jesus bore our sins. When he was there on the cross, God laid on him the iniquities of us all, and he suffered the death that we deserved and was coming to us because of our sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But God has made a way whereby we who are sinners and deserving to die can be forgiven and cleansed from our sin. If it is possible, Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but your will be done. Came back and found the disciples asleep. He addresses Peter and he said, Peter, could you not watch with me for just one hour? The spirit indeed is willing, he said, but the flesh is weak. Move over, Peter. I need to sit down with you. So many times I find that my spirit is willing. I desire to do the right thing, but we discover the weakness of our flesh. But that's exactly what Jesus had come to do. Die for the weakness of our flesh. Give himself for us. 
the interesting thing, we were in the upper room, the place where Jesus said, all of you are going to be offended this night because of me. Peter said, Lord, though they are all offended, I will never be offended. Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Lord, if they kill me, I wouldn't deny you, Peter responded. Now, we do know that when Jesus was arrested here and taken up to Caiaphas, we read that as Jesus was there being tried, a young maiden came up and said to Peter, Hey, aren't you one of his disciples? And Peter said, No, nah, not me. Don't know the man. And after a while, she came back and she said, I'm sure I saw you with him. He says, no, no, you're, you're wrong. It's not me. I, uh, I don't know him. The soldiers said, you must be one of his disciples. You're, you have a Galilean accent. And Peter began to swear and declare, I don't know him. And then the rooster began to crow. And Jesus looked at Peter. And Peter's heart was melted. Now, how do you suppose Jesus looked? Do you think he gave Peter one of those, ah, oh, you crumb, how could you, you know? <laughs> or was it, I told you so. I don't think so. I think in the look of Jesus, there was every bit of compassion that you could ever see in a person's eyes. I, I think that Jesus was again just saying, Peter, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I know the weakness of your flesh, Peter, but I'll be dying for that pretty soon. I think that Jesus gave him a look of compassion, a look of love, a tenderness, a forgiveness. Don't worry, Peter. Now, why is it that when Peter is so positive that I'll never deny you, they can kill me, I wouldn't deny you, and yet he denies him. How come the weakness here? Well, we know that there are several steps. First of all, the confidence in his flesh. Lord, though they may deny you, I will never deny you. That confidence in the flesh. Watch out for confidence in the flesh. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Watch out for fleshly confidence. And then secondly, we find him arguing with the Lord. When the Lord says, you know, uh, Peter, before the cock crows, you'll deny me three. Lord, I would never deny. Uh, they could kill me. He's arguing with the Lord. Uh, know this, if ever you find yourself in an argument with the Lord, you're wrong. <laughs> you've never been right yet when you've argued with him. You're always wrong. They came here to the garden. Jesus says, watch and pray. What's Peter doing? Sleeping when he should be praying. And then when they arrest Jesus, Peter pulls out the sword and starts swinging away. And he catches the servant of the high priest here, Malchus, and he cuts off his ear and Jesus said, put away the sword, Peter. They that live by the sword will die by the sword. And, but again, fleshly, kind of, Jesus said, Peter, don't you know, I could call a legion of angels to deliver me now if I wanted to. But the cup that the Father has given me to drink, shall I not drink it? The submission of Jesus to the will of the Father. And as they led Jesus away, we read, Peter followed afar off. Watch out for that trying to follow Jesus afar off. It doesn't work well. Following Jesus, you want to stick as close as you can. Don't try following afar off. It usually ends in denial and failure. And finally, we find that Peter was warming himself by the enemy's fire. Be careful when you find warmth at the enemy's fire. You're next to denial. So these are the steps that led to Peter's denial and to Peter's failure. And so we need to be careful. Now, Jesus knew all the time. He said, Peter, 
Satan has desired you. He wants to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith fail thee not. Now notice Peter's faith didn't fail. His courage did, but not his faith. Jesus said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. In other words, before the failure, Jesus was giving him encouragement, was, was speaking words of comfort and strength. And then when they went back up to the Sea of Galilee to wait for Jesus after his resurrection, Jesus said, I'll meet you at Galilee. Go on up there. I'll meet you there. Peter and the rest of them were there. And typical Peter. He said, hey, guys, I'm going fishing. The Lord hasn't shown up. They said, we'll go with you. He went out and they fished all night and caught nothing. And in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but they didn't know it was Jesus. He called, did you catch anything? They said, nah. He said, well, throw your nets on the other side. And they threw their nets on the other side and immediately they were filled with great fish, so much that they couldn't draw the nets into the boat. And when John saw that they couldn't draw the net in because of the multitude of fish, he said to Peter, it's the Lord. And Peter dove in and swam to shore. And they found that Jesus had a bed of coals there and fish were lying there on. And the other disciples came in a small little boat pulling the net of fish with them. And they pulled the net of fish up on the shore. And after they had had breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? Now, what were the these? Were they the fish flopping in the nets? Or were they the, the other disciples? Peter more or less said, Lord, they may fail you, but I won't. He was, in a sense, saying, I love you more than the rest of the disciples. We don't know exactly what Jesus was asking, if he was nodding toward the disciples or towards the nets. But, good question. Do you love the Lord more than success in your profession? Peter was a professional fisherman. Here are nets full of fish so much you can't put them in the boat. Do you, do you love your profession and, and, and all more than me? Or do you love me more than the other disciples? Lovest thou me? And Peter said, you know I love you, Lord. And he said, well, then feed my sheep. The second time Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, then take care of my little lambs. And the third time he said, do you love me? Now, why three times? I believe because Peter denied the Lord three times, and the Lord wanted to give Peter the opportunity to three times confess his love. I think that Jesus was a heart surgeon, and he was performing delicate surgery on Peter's heart at that particular point. But what a amazing story of God's love, God's forgiveness. And Peter became, of course, one of the important leaders in the early church, though he did fail. You know, it's, it's great. Uh, three strikes and you're not out. He denied the Lord three times, but he wasn't out. The Lord restored him. And, and that's the wonderful thing about God's love. Though we fail, his love never fails. And so here we are in the garden where Jesus was praying. His sweat became, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground as he was in great agony, seeking, if possible, that God would save man some other way. But because it was impossible, he went on to the cross and there he died for our sins. Glorious, glorious Lord, how blessed we are.